Obviously, Star Wars, tell us how you met. Um, <laughs> tell, I know you've explained this a hundred times before. How did you meet George Lucas? How did you get on board with that project? Uh, George Lucas and Brian De Palma were working together on the Warner Brothers lot in 1971. George was shooting THX 1138. Brian was directing Get to Know Your Rabbit. Uh, and they became friends. They were the only two directors on the lot who had beards. <laughs> and um, subsequently, uh, Brian was fired, uh, got into problems with the studio, and came back to New York. Uh, I didn't work on the film because I wasn't in the union and couldn't work in, in Los Angeles. And uh, because of the friendship uh, that they had established, George was very interested in Brian's films. And uh, he came back to New York and did Sisters, which I edited, and then he did Phantom of the Paradise. And uh, Phantom of the Paradise is picked up as an independent negative pickup deal by 20th Century Fox. And I flew to Los Angeles for a screening and a little party reception. And uh, the Lucases were there, George and his wife, Marsha, who's an editor, had worked a lot with Marty Scorsese. And uh, she, uh, we met at the party, and she, she said, oh, you're the editor? Come. I want you to meet my husband. He loves your work. You know, so she dragged me over to meet George. And he was an ordinary-looking guy with blue jeans and a white shirt hanging out of his pants and looked like just a, a normal person, which he's not. <laughs> he's an extraordinary person. But uh, that was how we met. And then... Uh, um, which scenes did you work on in particular uh, in Star Wars? In Star Wars. Well, um, Marsha, when I got there... Uh, so what happened was George shot the picture uh, in England, and the original editor was let go at the end of principal photography. He came back through New York uh, with Marsha, and we screened Carrie for them. And a couple of weeks later, and then they went off to um, Marin County, where they were working. And uh, a couple of weeks later, I got a call saying, can you come help on Star Wars when you finish Carrie? So I did. And uh, when I got there, Marsha was assembling the, uh, the final battle sequence. And um, Richard Chu, who was the other editor, had started recutting from the beginning. And he and I would work on the reels while Marsha was mired in constructing this end battle sequence. And um, the elements she had to use were uh, blue screen shots of the actors sitting in mock uh, cockpit shots. And, and uh, for the exteriors of the ships, they were using black and white World War II fighter footage that really had nothing to do with the shot that would ultimately replace it, but it was, an, it was meant to represent an exterior of the ship. So that was it. So she was working on that. And then at a certain point, there was some disputes about budget on the film, and the studio wanted to cut the end, the end battle. So, well, you know, they rescue the princess, the movie's over, that's it. Mm -hmm. you, you don't need any more than that. And George was determined that there be an end battle, so he wanted to get the shots uh, in the works so that they couldn't, you know, he, he wanted to do enough work on it so that it wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense to cut the scene. So we had to, he asked me to stop work and, and work on the end battle, and we divided it up into different sections, and Marsha took a certain section, and I took a section leading from, uh, leading up to the explosion of the Death Star. So I was given responsibility for that section of it. And uh, we worked in tandem for several days. Uh, three of us together, George and Marsha, would sit on the couch behind me while I drove. And then after a couple of hours, she would relieve me. And she'd get up and she'd sit there. And George and I would sit back and, and offer comments. And the three of us collaborated. On, but the final, you know, ultimately, the, uh, this, this little stretch of time was, was my responsibility. And um, one of the things that we discovered in cutting the sequence that was that we needed to develop um, a feeling of tension. And to, to create suspense, you need to have the audience feel that time is running out. And we didn't have enough material to generate that. So we went and in, during post, we went and shot sequences 
uh, a sequence of the Empire destroying the Death Star, uh, r destroying Alderaan earlier, so we could see the process by which the destruction of a planet takes place. So we gave the example early in the film, and then we repeated it at this point, so we know that they're about to blow up the planet. And um, so there's a lot of shots of dials being turned and so forth. And in order to uh, give some, um, to personalize the destruction of the Death Star, we cut briefly to a shot of Governor Tarkin, played by Peter Cushing, uh, just before the explosion, to, so that we're, it wasn't just a simple recording of events, but it had a personal dimension, a you know, dramatic dimension to it as well. Great. I think that's, um, we might not have time for Q&A afterwards. I'm sorry we kind of run out of time, but this is a fantastic note to end on. So uh, let's, um, let's watch Star Wars again. Someone we need to, uh, need to I, say if we're... Yeah, I just want to thank uh, my assistant, Amar Ingregi, who helped me put together these clips. Any of you editors in London need a great assistant. Amar is your man. Do we have time for questions, or are we out? We don't. They, they're using the theater for a, okay. a screening later on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just feel free to bring your questions to the party afterwards. Well, can we just uh, thank Paul for his time and for his generous insight? <laughs> Thank you very much.